Hello YouTube and welcome back to Be A Loser. Well, I know a lot of you have been fasting and hopefully seeing results, but I've had some questions about when is the best time to eat? Meaning, is there a better time of day to eat than other times for weight loss? So should one eat in the evening and then fast for their 16 to 24 hours? Or should one eat at breakfast or lunch and then begin their fasting period? Well, the answer to this is actually coded into our biology and is known as circadian rhythms. First off, let's look back over fasting in general and if it is the best method for eating. I mean, there are many experts who will recommend eating constantly throughout the day. In a book titled The Diet Fix, Yanni Friedhoff recommends that from the moment you get out of bed, that you eat every two and a half hours until you go to bed at night. On the flip side of that, we're suggesting that eating only once a day, or even once every other day, is perfectly adequate for good health. So to determine which will work best for the most people, let's take a look at the animal kingdom. Now the animals who share the most with us from an eating standpoint are known as omnivorous mammals. For these animals, it's basically never possible to eat three times per day in order to remain healthy. And if you look at carnivores, lions and the like, they only eat a few times per week or even a few times per month. Obviously, this is often because food is scarce, but even when food is available, it isn't always easy to get. After all, it's a lot harder to catch a gazelle than a Big Mac. So, it's clear that eating several times per day is not a necessity for omnivores and carnivores, meaning that we're not solely driven to eat by a deficiency of nutrients. And it's apparent that the long intervals between feedings doesn't impair the carnivorous lions. As we've seen, if this were the case, the species wouldn't have lasted very long. No, instead they store most of the calories they eat in their bodies, and then use this stored energy when it's needed for survival. This is the natural way of things. On the other side are obligate herbivores, like cows, who are designed to graze constantly because their food source isn't very high in caloric density. So unlike mammals, these types of animals need to constantly be eating. If we were designed to graze, we'd be cows. No, mammals are designed to survive with an intermittent food supply. So we store food energy that we eat as glycogen in the liver and triglycerides in the fat tissues. When you eat, you put the food energy into these storages. When you fast, you remove them and use them for energy. It simply wouldn't make any sense for us to be adapted in this way and still need to eat every few hours in order to remain healthy. Ancient hunter-gatherer societies had virtually no obesity, diabetes, or cardiovascular disease, even during times of high food availability. Estimates show that two-thirds of their diet consisted of animal meat. And yet, all the experts seem to tell us how bad those meats and saturated fats are for us, even though our ancestors had no problems with it. Now, it should be pointed out that there were societies that ate diets high in carbohydrates and also suffered little obesity. Two examples of these would be the Kitavans of Papua New Guinea and the Okinawans of Japan. So the carbohydrate to obesity relation is a modern one and is most likely due to refined carbohydrates. Approximately 10,000 years ago came the agricultural revolution. We began to farm instead of hunt and began to have a much more reliable food source. This in turn led to the standard pattern of eating two to three times per day, but still, there was little obesity until the 1970s in the United States. For more on that, you can review my history of the American diet in our LCHF series. So as we can see, it's possible to eat a diet high in fats and not suffer obesity and diabetes, or diabetes, and it's also possible to eat a diet high in carbohydrates and suffer no diabetes as well. 
But we focus greatly on these macronutrients, be it the dietary fats in the standard American diet or the dietary carbohydrates in the LCHF diet. When in reality, what we should focus on is the insulin response of the foods we eat. You can watch my body set weight video for more on that. So it's not so much the macronutrient breakdown that's the problem, but the processing of those nutrients. But that's a video for another series. So back to fasting. We know that we are designed to survive for long periods of time without eating. But if we do decide to fast intermittently, then when is the best time of day to eat so as to aid our bodies in using the nutrients most efficiently? Well, there are self-sustained behavioral changes that occur over every 24-hour period. These are known as circadian rhythms. Most hormones in the body are secreted based on these rhythms. And the circadian rhythms respond to differences in ambient light determined by season and time of day, which, as it so happens, also governed food availability. These rhythms are observed in almost every animal, and estimates indicate that 10% of any given organism's genetic makeup show circadian changes. But we're talking about humans here. <laughs> it's believed that during Paleolithic times, food was scarce and typically available during the day, mainly because as humans, we see better in daylight. So this begs the question, is there a difference between eating in the day or eating at night? Well, there have been a few studies to try and determine just that. One study compared eating a large breakfast versus eating a large dinner. The study randomly assigned two groups of overweight women to eating a large breakfast or a large dinner. Both groups ate 1,400 calories per day, and each diet's macronutrient count was identical. It was only the timing of the meal that was changed. Both groups lost weight, but the breakfast group was clearly better for weight loss and waist size, which as we've seen is an indicator of dangerous visceral fat. They lost nearly two and a half times more weight than the dinner group, 19 pounds, 8.7 kilograms versus eight pounds, 3.6 kilograms. So what accounted for the difference in weight loss? Obviously, both groups saw a rise in insulin levels after the meal, but the dinner group occurred a much larger rise in insulin. So this means that the same caloric intake led to greater insulin secretion based solely on the time of day. In a smaller study in which the same meal was given either early or late in the day, the insulin response was 25 to 50 percent greater in the evening. Now, this doesn't mean that you should eat a large meal the moment you wake up, but perhaps eating a large meal in the evening will cause a greater insulin response than eating that same meal in the day. In our current society, breakfast is typically a problem meal in that we're typically in a rush to get out the door, and in order to save time, well, we eat highly processed foods. So the solution to this is to eat a large lunch at or after noon for your main or only meal of the day. Historically, we've been told not to eat at night because your body won't have a chance to burn it off and it will turn to fat. Well, that's not technically true, but there does seem to be a connection between eating late at night and obesity. There's a natural circadian rhythm to hunger as well. I mean, if it was left up to food consumption, then we would be hungriest in the morning after our overnight fast. But studies, and probably your own experience, show that this is just not the case. Hunger is actually lowest in the morning. The hunger hormone ghrelin has a marked circadian rhythm. An interesting note here is that as it relates to fasting, ghrelin production peaks in days one and two, and then steadily falls. We've explained previously that most individuals deal with hunger for the first two days of fasting, and then the hunger disappears after that. Ghrelin is at its lowest at 7.50 a.m. and at its highest at 7.50 p.m. It's important to note here that these rhythms are part of our genetic makeup, 
So even without food stimuli, these rhythms will still exist. However, some studies are conflicting in their results. One study failed to show any correlation between late night eating and weight gain. But even so, it still bears consideration. If hunger is suppressed actively in the morning, then it seems counterproductive to force ourselves to eat. I mean, after all, the entire premise of this series is that eating does not promote weight loss. But since hunger is highest at night, then insulin production will also be at, at its highest if we eat at that time. And again, insulin drives weight gain. In North America, dinner is typically the main meal, and thereby the largest meal of the day. This is generally not due to health concerns, but because of the standard workday. But because eating at this time can cause significant weight gain due to increased insulin levels, well, this is not a sound strategy for weight loss either. So, it would appear that the best strategy is to eat a large meal at midday, between 12 and 3 p.m., and only a small meal in the evening, or no meal at all. It's interesting to note that this is the typical Mediterranean eating pattern. They eat a very large lunch and have a very small dinner. We often think of this Mediterranean diet as healthy due to the foods it contains, but perhaps the timing of the meals is just as important. So, while all of this information is valuable, it's really just a guide for creating your fasting schedule. If you can break your fast at lunch, then perhaps that would maximize your fat burning for that fast. But remember that the beauty of fasting is that it can be tailored to your specific schedule. And we'll go ahead and wrap up this one here. Remember to subscribe to the channel and be sure to enable alerts by clicking the bell so that you'll get all of the videos when they upload. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Be A Loser Today. And as always, if you like any of the videos, please hit the like button as it does help. We'll be back soon with a new video, and in the meantime, you can check out the History of the American Diet video here, and the Body Set Weight video here. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep being a loser.